what is up guys of course welcome to our week 8 battle in the MMBA and this time we're going up against Darud Leafstorm who's a long time follower of me actually a very very competent battler so just with that in mind I was actually somewhat worried he also go by the Everdeen Assault as his uh, team name and um, with that said he had a lot of things that were really really interesting that could bring against me uh, and I was definitely, you know, juggling back and forth, you know, what route I want to take against him because I have a lot of things that threatens me. Well, his free OU mods would definitely come for this game considering my team really. So I had Mega Charizard, Thunder's T, and Rotom Watch. As you guys see, they are a part of that team. Very, very, very scary stuff. Outside of that, his UU mods are very, very formidable. I was feeling the shame that Lucario was going to make it, but maybe not Blissey. We see Shaman, but luckily for us, not Lucario. And that was predicting either Blastoise or Golbat. Blaster was his preferred choice. And uh, that was predicting Yukusi, which is, of course, his um, one of his Ari Mamba actually brought Malamar instead. Now, that is quite right, because at least that means that he's gonna bring, well, a lot of offensive pressure against me. And I decided to develop myself somewhat in that fashion, but still not all the way. So my team is as follows, Life Form and Electric with Hidden Power Ice, it is basically a, a man that is able to outspeed you know, whatever he brings naturally against me uh, outside of his Thunder's team, possibly be his Scarfs, but basically it threatens, um, he can hit his, all of his mom pretty much super effectively or at least neutral Thunderbolt does hurt his team would be of course the likes of Rotom Wash. Then we have Mega Metagross with um, Sin Hitbutt I believe, yeah Sin Hitbutt. Earthquake, Ice Punch, and then we have uh, last move I do believe was uh, wow, trying to kind of remembering here a power up punch for some reason. Um, no, Thunder Punch. Sorry, sorry, trying to just trying to remember. Uh, Thunder Punch is there for Blastoise. Basically, it does two hit KO if it is full defensive, which is kind of nice. Man, Man Girls definitely hurts if he has something to deal with. Toros probably my trump cover this battle because it's so versatile. Rock Climb, Senate Bud, Rock Slide, and Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt is able to 2 hit Kyro Blasters if it is uh, by any chance, of course, defensively or just physically defensive. And Rock Slide is able to 1 hit KO. Oh, Jay. <laughs> Trying to record late night. Um, and of course, Rock Slide is able to actually 1 hit KO Mega Shard X if it is in some defensive estimate. And just Toros at speed everything, which is awesome. Then we have a Sumeru with Wakanberry uh, standard set here, able to actually take a Thunder Punch from a Dragon Dance Charizard X. Uh, Tangerov Assault Vest, nothing to it, able to wall up Setra of his mana coming freely, uh, kinda like that. And then we have Rhyperior with Rindo Berry, Stealth Rock, Dragon Sail, uh, Stone Edge Earthquake, so nothing big there. Um, Rindo Berry does not save him from a Seed Turf and Shaming, mind you. So, yeah, anyway, with all that said, let's see what happened. So from the get-go, I'm just gonna lead off with Manetric. I'm really hoping to kind of either that he leads with Rotom or leads with Thunderous. So he's gonna actually lead off with Rotom, which okay. I'm gonna go for Volt Switch, hoping that Thunderous comes in, so I can check whether or not it is Scarfs. But actually, just in here, I was thinking he probably gonna go for a Will Volt Switch or a Will O' Wisp. So Tangrowth is the smartest choice to bring in here, as he goes for a Toxic and misses. That is really unfortunate. While not, you know, since Rota really can't stay in, it still is kind of a big deal considering that that would have been helped against my Tangrowth. As he's switching to Skyrender or Shaman, I'm just gonna go for a knockoff. Basically here, I am, I'm not fair enough by Shaman, even if it has Air Slash, because uh, I have Hidden Power Ice, but I can't do it kill it, and also he misses uh, that, of course, important hit of Seed Flare. Uh, and next turn we'll go for Nerve Power, probably hoping I switch out to Metagross, which I won't do because that's too risky. But I was actually with myself for a knockoff, hoping he would switch out. So I'm I'm doing all predictions myself. And at this point here, I'm just gonna keep attacking him. I kinda feel that I can't do it go in, but I can't force him to synthesis as he misses another seed flare, which is just the worst. And uh, now it's an area where I I know he will synthesis, I'm just gonna go back to my mind Manetric and um, being that it packs Earthquake or Earth Power, I really can't overdict her, I have to go Flame for Flame for will guarantee kill it considering that it's an offensive variant of Shaman, but he'll of course see that coming, goes to Rotom of course, which is a 
very very good switch in here and uh, I am in a kind of a rough spot here I need to go for thunderbolts I need to go for damage even though I know like I stated before thunders is a switch in here thunders can take that thunderbolt luckily for me he does decide to stay in and um, go for a will-o-wisp here which is unfortunate but not too shabby because it this only means that I can at least from this kind of area keep attacking him and being that he, a Thunderbolt does kill him from this range I'm going to go for Hidden Power Ice because there is no way I can play around this really and uh, luckily for me he does go into Thunderous being of course that I had to go for Thunderbolt to kill it and uh, I'm just gonna keep going because like I said I really want to see whether or not he's scarf and so he's gonna take out my Manetri he's going to switch out Crawl will tell me that it's not that I go back to Rotom as I go for Hidden Power Ice yet again and here's the thing, Rotom is still in the area where Thunderbolt or Bolt Switch will kill him and I will die to the next turn anyway due to recall from Life Orb and of course the bird itself. So having that in mind, I decided, I haven't seen Pain Split or anything like that yet, so I'm just gonna keep over in the Power Ice. I'm gonna fall anyway as he switched down Thunderous yet again and he's going to lose Thunderous right here and now and that is just marvelous. Um, and like I said, I only I I only stayed in because I knew I was gonna fall anyway, and it definitely paid off because he was trying to get recovery on his thunderous and it just backfired back onto him. So anyway, I'm gonna go to Torision here as I go for Swedish the Malamar, and uh, I just go for Rock Climb knowing it's a two hit KO as he goes for a knockoff, and this knockoff is extremely unfortunate. I was really hoping it would superpower me because that would mean I just kept my strength but this time I actually lose 30% of my damage output and what does that mean? it means that Rock Climb is now not a 2 hit KO on a Blastoise with Thunderbolt in mind this also means that a plethora of his mon actually can survive Tauros and that is not good so I'm just gonna go to Sarlax. I have no reason staying in there trying to soak the skull as he gets his Toxic off this time on the Tangrove and Tangrove can't do anything uh, it shouldn't be able to do anything against the Blastoise outside of Giga Rain and um, being that a Toxic means that I have a position where I actually need to go for Giga Rain anyway hoping he has Ice Beam, that's my only thing I can do here but he goes to Malamar which is better because that means at least I get him out of the way which is a very very annoying mod to be dealing with even though it's not the most opposing Pokemon, it still is a mod that can be able to keep coming for damage um, so he's gonna bring Viking Rander, being of course the Charizard X, and um, even if he goes for um, a Dragon Dance here, right? Pure is not specifically threatened by a Charizard X because of uh, well, it's Solid Rock. Earthquake is probably the strongest hit against me, but plus one, he's not able to kill me, and uh, luckily goes to Dragon Dance, I should say. But uh, he is definitely not risk here staying in, and I was thinking. Should I go for Self Rock? Should I? But in the end, I decided to go for Stone Edge anyway because it's the safer call. Plus, uh, I really don't want to have a situation where Roland could pain split against me when I actually switched out on it. Plus, Dragon Claws are 2 hit KO anyway on me, which is scary. Now, here's like I said, due to me being. I, I am Rindoberry, but since it's offensive, that means I still won't survive it. So I'm just going to bring Sarlax here as he goes for a Seed Flare, and uh, we'll soak this. We'll soak this just like nope. Nope, really, but I do get a special defense drop, and that is that is not good. But I can still take an air slash with little to no issue, and there is Hello with a hit of power of ice. Well, he flinches me, and now Tangrove is pretty useless because I don't have a switching here. He can actually freely go for Seed Flare without any ramification. So I guess there's some justice for you know that beginning hack there, definitely, because this is definitely taking him back a few steps. Well, I can just go back to Torision. Tauros is actually able to two it or one it KO the Shaman from that range if I land a Rock Slide, which is, let's face it, it is a gamble. Uh, but Rock Slide here does a good chunk of damage. But being the position I am in, I actually need to keep attacking. I can't switch out anymore. And I do land a Rock Slide, but unfortunately, I'm just shy of a KO as you go for a Scold. But. Yeah, we actually managed to leave. And I'm actually naive nature, so that, I mean, in minus defenses or special defense. So I'm really glad to survive it. That was probably a roll. I didn't really check that out. I was hoping to kill it. But yeah, we'd actually knock out the Blastoise, which is awesome. Now, if Mike and Ryan is going to come back with an extremely dangerous Charizard X, I am not this time going to switch out. There's no reason for him to do it, so Rock Slide should still hurt him as he goes for Dragon Dance. 
Now here's the thing, I was thinking he's either gonna go for um, Flare Blitz or Dragon Claw, but Dragon Claw seems risky being that I have a Sumeril, so Flare Blitz was the obvious choice, or at least so I was thinking as he goes for Dragon Claw. And that is a 2-hit KO, and I really don't have any switching to it, and uh, I wasn't really gonna risk an Earthquake, being that if he packs the Earthquake, that means that my Sumeril can take a Thunder Punch, which it can with my Wackenberry this time. So he's gonna go for Thunder Punch, which I kinda predicted I had to, and I have to go play rough in case he switches out, of course, to Shaman. Luckily, I land my play rough, I should say that right now. Had I missed the play rough, my opponent would have won there and then. But luckily for me, I have so much power left in me and some decent accuracy that uh, I'm gonna take this one home. Because there is no way Shaman is gonna kill me, and offensive earth power against my Metagross is not gonna be able to kill um, my, my Mega Metagross. But I wanted to finish in style, and the only way I know that is to bring on the champ of this battle, being of course Torision. And Torision is just gonna wrap this up with a mighty, mighty rock climb. And that is a 2 0 victory in our favor against, of course, Darude Leafstorm, which I really, really think played a really good game, but the luck was definitely not in his favor, and we just barely win this one. So, right, you know, the obvious afterthoughts, and I actually have been thinking back and forth, you know, from this game. Even, you know, he wasn't lucky there were, of course, two misses on Seed Gear, which is kind of insane, but also missed with Toxic. Yeah. Early on, we rolled him against my Tangrove, which is, I, I'm really gonna state this, it is unfortunate that it doesn't pull that off, but I think it evens out himself anyway as the battle went on. And not because I get a like massively momentum with Tangrove, but Tangrove in the end definitely fell, like it definitely fell hard once things was kind of in place. And he said was actually that he did, actually did misplay with Malamar going for a knockoff over Superpower. Being that I would have survived Superpower. I do believe going for Naka was a superior play because that meant that a lot of his mod can actually stay in against Tauros, which they couldn't at that point. So um, while my opponent thought it was a misplay, that was actually the best play he possibly could make. And uh, to be completely frank, I think that was. Um, I definitely didn't take it as a misplay, if anything. I think it was the ideal play to make there. And uh, yeah, I think that's about the size of it. I, I was. Maybe a feeling I should have have an even more offensive team here. I should definitely have Hero Cross here, kind of feeling. But um, this was just a tough game. I think I have the right team, but he definitely brought a team that could deal with it. And I, I only win because I had enough power in the end. Wakenberry, I assume, will probably be one of them. Uh, outside of that, there was no way of me of actually dealing properly with that Charizard X, which, as you guys saw, actually destroyed my team at one Brian dance which is just wow um so yeah with that said guys thank you so much of course as always for watching and uh, yeah we're actually are at number two now I believe in the M MMBA which is kind of cool trying to grab that one number one spot again because two losses is is not my way <laughs> anyway guys thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next video until then take care